<laughs> All right, get your Bibles out. Let's make the devil nervous. Wave it in the air, whether it's your phone, paperback, I don't care. Say, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. I can have. I can have. What it says I can what have. What it says I can have. I can do. I can do. What it says I can what do. What it says I can do. And I am. And I am. What it says what I it am. What it says I am. Woo! Father, we just thank you for your word. Lord, it is the mirror we look into, and not only do we see the reflection of you, but we see a reflection of ourselves, and uh, that word begins to change our reflection. So, Father, we just thank you as we dive into the word. We're being changed by the reflection of you. So, Father, we just ask the word to go to work in our hearts, in our lives, in our minds, in our bodies, changing us everywhere we need changed. And we'll give you praise and glory for it in Jesus' name. Someone say it. Amen. 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 Change, change, change. change. So how many know what we have been on a series? What is it? How to control your thought life. Yes. No one struggles with that. <laughs> you know, oh, man. You know, the you know we found, we've been finding out that the promises of God, which are in the word, you know, and there's a lot of promises, whether it's healing or provision or protection or forgiveness, it, whatever the promise is, there's lots of promises. There's one that is crucial that we're studying, and that is the promise that you can have a sound mind. Amen. I'll say it again. You can have a sound mind. Yep. So it's, it's important that we learn. It's not just an automatic. We also learned that, that when you're saved, your spirit gets saved. Remember that? We saw that. Your spirit gets saved, but your mind has to be renewed. And how it gets renewed is how we're studying. We found that the Word of God is the best way to renew our mind. Am I right? Yes. Put God's Word in. And if you do nothing... <laughs> you get nothing. You stay the same. And so circumstances dictate who you become. And, you know, it's better to put the Word of God in you and let the Word of God be the compass of your life and tell you how to navigate everything. And uh, it is, it is uh, you know, the Bible says that the ways of God is a, is a narrow path, and few find it. And I just determined a long time ago, I'm going to find the path, and I'm going to stay on in the path. And, uh, you know, we don't want to be deceived. We don't want to be destroyed. And there's a lot of things vying for your mind. You watch commercials on TV, and they're trying to get in your mind to make you buy their product or think the way they want you to think. So we need to have our minds washed by the Word of God and renewed. You know, it's not just automatic. We have a part, and that's why... The Lord said it's few find it because most people don't want to take the effort. But y'all are wise, sharp, good looking, on fire for God, happy and excited and open for everything God has for you. You're not, you're not the average ordinary person because they wouldn't be here. But you're here because God's got a word for you, a work for you to work with him and live in a blessed life. So we're going to our theme verse for this series, which is 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. And we have uh, been reading it out of both the New King James and the NLT. So the King James says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. We learned that the NLT says God's not given us the spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. And the, the reason self-discipline is so awesome is because we have to discipline our minds to think right. That was, a, that was a good place for some amens. You have to discipline your mind to think right. You don't just automatically think right. You have to discipline your mind. And to do that, we talked about practicing peace and how important practicing peace is and um, that includes 
when others do things, which we talked about at ministry time, about when, when others hurt you, you got to practice peace. you got to practice peace. Uh, and, and what were some other ways we talked about with practicing? How can we practice peace? Uh, you get a can of resist it oh, I and did. spray <laughs> resist it. Help us, Pastor Greg. You know, we got to take thoughts captive. And, uh, and then renew our mind with a new thought. And it's not an easy thing. Um, spending my whole life figuring this one out and doing it, practicing it. Because, you know, we all get thoughts and we all get hurt and offended. Uh, Starling mentioned uh, uh, a minister that was very dear to us. Um, I'm in ministry today because... Um, I was in a place in my life where it was a make it or break it kind of thing. I'm either, I'm either going to go in ministry or I'm not. And uh, just gone through a difficult place in my life, kind of got my feet wet in ministry and, and got really hurt. And so we went to this uh, minister to, to get some counsel and somebody that really didn't know me, didn't know our situation, and just kind of just laid out, we need some wisdom here in this situation. So gave us wisdom. We ended up going to his church, and, and uh, this man believed in me. You know, when somebody, the power of someone believing in you changes you, and I'm, I'm a result of that. Someone believed in me that the call of God was on my life. He's not done with me. There's a future, and, and so I'm in ministry today because of one person really pouring into me. Well, this one person hurt me later on. Very bad. And so I'll never forget the moment where trying to resist negative thoughts happen. I'm at this gathering, prayer, prayer gathering. We're going to be all spiritual and pray and seek God. And, and so I'm in the parking lot, and none of you have ever done this, but uh, way in the back of the parking lot, I see him get out of his car. And I was walking to go meet somebody else. I'm walking through the parking lot, and I see him. And it got my attention. And I was like, oh, I'm confronted with what am I going to do? Am I going to greet him, or am I just going to pretend he doesn't exist? And so I went, and I thought, I'm going to pretend he's not here. And so, so I literally walked away, and, uh, and the Holy Spirit just checked on my heart. Don't let turmoil go a day longer. I'm giving you an opportunity to create peace. I don't like you right now. <laughs> so I went over, and uh, it ended up just being this healing moment. How many know one hug, one greeting can wash away years of bitterness and hurt? And it was that... God moment. Didn't know those kind of things existed until then. I was like, whoa, whoa. God just did something. And we didn't have to rehash the hurt and, you know, you did this and are you sorry? Are you, are you sorry? Are you going to, are you going to say you, it was your fault? You know, we didn't have to do any of that in a moment. It was all healed. It was all good. And, uh, and we ended up having a great minute. Great relationship, preaching in our church a few times, and uh, I mean, and then when this man passes away on the 4th of July, we get the news, there was nothing there that was like, I wish I would have made things right. He left this life, and there's still things I should have said. You know, and... And there's peace in that moment. You know, um, I, I have a feeling there's somebody sitting here that the individual that you didn't make peace with has passed away. And I want you to know that God can heal your heart. But God wants to tell you right now, don't allow that to happen again. It happened, and you've got to move on. And God will heal your mind you can renew your mind, but choose 
to forgive, choose to think on different thoughts for the next time that comes along. The Bible says, and we don't have this verse, sorry, uh, but the Bible says that offense will come. But to be careful what you do with it. You're not going to get through life without opportunities. Good opportunities. There is not one individual in this room who will not have a good opportunity to be offended. Not one individual. You're not exempt. I don't care how young you are or how old you are, you will have opportunities. But what do you do with those opportunities? It matters right here. It matters in your thought life. What do you choose to think on? And if you think, oh, I've forgiven them, then why are you still thinking about it? Come on. What are you choosing to think on? Are you thinking on, on the lovely and good report? We went over that last week, too. And, you know, um, one thing that I have been learning as I've been studying this topic is that I can't just outthink some thoughts. I have to replace them with God's thoughts. Amen. You're never going to just outthink it, outreason it that you have to literally replace some thoughts with what God says about it. And how do you find God's thoughts? Right here. That's how you find what God has to think about it, what God has to say about it. Is, is God to have a lot to say about forgiveness? Does God have a lot to say about peace, walking in peace? Does God have a lot to say about, oh, oh, I'm just, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. There's so much here. You know, as we were, I couldn't help but think about a certain couple in our church that, that the, the story goes with what we're talking about, and that is they happen to have a business that they restore furniture and especially cabinets, <clears throat> Martins. So anyway, uh, I was thinking about, because I've actually been with them when they're doing this process, and sometimes they're, I mean... They're working muscles. They're sanding. And sometimes they get out the big sanders, you know, the kind that are the power tools you guys like. Arr, 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 arr. And they get out the sanders, and they're like, Rrr, and they're sanding away. Stuff's flying everywhere. They're getting in the grooves with the little piece of papers. And those little pieces, I tried it. It kind of hurt a little bit. It's not always lovely on the fingernails and all of that. The little pieces of sand to get in the grooves of the cabinet, you know, to get those little nicks out, and they're going to town. And I found out that that is a necessary step in making them restored. Because if you just slap a coat of paint on it without doing that step, it's going gonna, it's gonna to start chipping off, isn't it? In your thought life, don't just slap another thought on. You got to get to the nitty gritty of, I got to sand this out of my life. I need, to, I need to not skip the step of forgiveness means, no, I am not choosing to think about it anymore. I'm sanding it out. And if you got to get the big blasters, go with the big blasters. The big blasters. Start reading more. Make the devil really have something to think about because you just like, I'm just going to up my time with God. Take that. Good. Good. I have found that in the times of my life that I have been the most hurt, I just up my God time. Amen. I'm like, take that, Satan. Yeah. You tried to hurt me. I'm just going to up my God time. Yes. Pretty soon he's like, man, leave her alone. I'm serious. Man, I'm telling you what, we got to renew these minds because it is crucial. The Bible tells us that we need to wash our minds with the washing of the Word of God. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, Starlene is very thankful I take a shower often, <laughs> uh, especially when it's 90 degrees outside. <laughs> like but, this week, a couple times I went, woo. How about a nighttime shower? <laughs> but you know, like, like you can uh, you can smell body odor, but you know sometimes we can smell mental odor. Yes. And you just can't take uh, soap and water to your brain, 
So how do you clean it? How do you clean it? You got to be in God's Word. Yeah. God's Word washes us, and we need, because thoughts are coming all the time, and if you don't wash your mind with something, you know, it just accumulates. Yeah. And so uh, it's all part of the restoring. It's all part of the sanding, and, you know, it's just... If you get a chance, go down to the kitchen down below. Uh, if you've seen the cabinets before, uh, the original, they're all renewed, and they look restored, and they look amazing. But there's oil on those things, and oil's tough. Yeah, they got reborn. Those oils in the, in the areas are, are difficult, and sometimes we have embedded thoughts that do take a lot of work. And... Um, I mentioned, I think, on the, the first series in this, our opening one, uh, I copy, I wrote out uh, 1 Corinthians 13 on a card, and I kept it with me and just read those love verses and just, Greg is patient. <laughs> Greg is kind. You know, and just going through the whole thing of love because I needed to do some work on my love walk and so what better way than to just keep renewing my mind and seeing those verses several times throughout the day to remind myself how I'm supposed to think and how I'm supposed to act. And so if that's not just in the forefront, you know, you got to train. You got to train. And uh, this is the process that we all have to go through. Let's go back to those cabinets for a minute. <clears throat> so I happen to know this couple very well. And I happen to know that sometimes if they want to get the project done in a weekend, which they usually are, then they sometimes work really long hours. And so uh, they have been known to sometimes work into the evening on, on cabinets because they want to get it done and they want to do it right. There are times in your life that you can choose to just drag something out in your mind or you can choose to spend the extra time with God to knock it out in a weekend. Are you hearing me? I know some individuals that they're still rehashing stuff from a long time ago. Because they haven't done the due diligence of knocking it out. If you got to spend extra time with God, do it. Just shut off the TV or shut off your phone. Shut off social media and get, get work on it. Uh, work the long hours. Work, work due diligence to get the right kind of thinking. It's worth it. Your life will be different. Your life will be free. Seriously, you won't carry around the sad face anymore because you've done due diligence. Yeah. You know how we'll know? Because your, your mind does come with you. And even though you don't think anybody knows, <laughs> it seeps out. Yeah. Do the due diligence and go, God, okay, I need to take care of this. If I need a little extra time with you, so be it. Figure it out. Ask if you have a spouse because the kids are running around. Say, I need a little more time with God. Can you handle these little ones so I can get a little more time with Jesus? I'm helping you ones with little kids right now. Spouse, help each other out. If one is hurting, they need Jesus. And so go, okay, I got you, honey. I will take care of that so, so you can have some more Jesus time. When we were raising a family, that happened a lot. And I can remember tiptoeing out of bed, hoping and praying that my tiptoe was quiet enough that I could have some Jesus time. I, I know what that's like. I mean, my kids were so attached that I could barely my, go to the bathroom. <laughs> Vanessa laughs to this day that she would get under the door and she'd stick her fingers under there because I told her, I just need a minute. To, can I use the toilet? And her fingers would come under and go, aren't you done yet? Hi, Mommy. And she'd be doing this little finger thing to me. Hey, Mommy. I miss you, Mommy. I can't have three minutes. You know, you're just practical. The, somewhere in the Bible, I think it's Ephesians, says, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. And, uh, you know, I remember when our premarital 
counseling. That was what they told us. Hello. You're going to need that. <laughs> that was Amy's, by the way, so. <laughs> On the front row. So. Thanks for interrupting. <laughs> um, but. He told us, don't let the sun go down on your wrath because your mind never shuts off. And so if you don't take care of it today, it'll grow tomorrow. Now, that doesn't mean you have to have a solution. There are sometimes the best times you can actually resolve something is with some sleep. You know, just hashing it out all night isn't what we're saying. There are times when you go, I'm exhausted. I love you. Let's talk about this when we've had some sleep. Are you hearing me? What it means is you don't go to bed angry, but you go, we can't solve this tonight with no sleep. Let's sleep on it, you know. And if you need to sleep on it a couple nights, you know, to figure it out. But just don't go to bed angry. And that's all part of keeping your mind healthy, sound, disciplined. Because, uh, man, the enemy is looking for every opportunity yeah. to get you off your game. So be mindful. All right. So keep your thoughts in faith. In faith. Everybody say, in faith. In faith. Do you know that your thought life can, have a, can be faith-filled thoughts? Okay, we're going to Matthew chapter 7. Here we go. Matthew 7, and we're going to verse 24. Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise. Like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the flood waters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and does not obey, it is foolish. Does not obey his words is foolish. Like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and the floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. So let's, let's look at this story a little more in depth because um, this story is talking about tests in your brain. And there are really four stages in a test. And the, we see the first, do you see what happened in this test? That what, what happened first? What came first? Rain. Am I right? Come on. Are you read, did you read it? Or were you all looking at the Bible that was flipping? I saw that in my peripheral vision, and I saw people just smiling. <laughs> what happened first? The rains came. In life, rain will come. And, uh, <laughs> you know, um, you're going to feel rain. If you go and stand outside in the pouring rain, you're going to feel it. There are times that, um, and especially us women, we feel things. I got no comeback. It's all you, baby. It'll be a long night tonight, <laughs> hashing that one out. <laughs> I, I might need that verse given to me before we leave today. The first, te the first test is when rain happens, are you going to stay in just the feelings or what's the second test that comes, came along in that story? What's the second one? Uh, verse 25, though the rain comes in torrent. So this isn't just a little mist. This is a torrent. Yeah. Torrential rains. Which does what? And then the flood waters whoa, rise. Whoa, floods. And it, what, it, what does it do? So, so I'm too scared to make an analogy right now. So give me an analogy of in life when floodwaters come. I'm hoping it's a good one. Well, we have a, I mean, we, humanity, we have, a, you know, we create sayings, and they sound good and, and biblical, you know, it's, it's uh, but a lot of times they're not. But people say, when it rains, it pours. pours. I, uh. I got introduced to this saying, uh, they come in threes, 
So this is one of our come to Jesus marital moments. I had, still kind of do, but I tamed it down. But I was, had this one drive going to work. I was in construction, so my, my jobs changed every few months. And uh, so I had this one route I was taking. So in the matter of just a couple months, I'm going down the same road, eating my toast, drinking my coffee, whatever, on my way, listening to whatever's playing, and just kind of in neutral. Speed limit's 35. I'm doing like 50. <laughs> you know, it's a country road. There's nothing. It's safe. I'm like the only guy driving this road, uh, this back road to get. And this police officer pulls me over. And... Uh, you know how fast you go. So all that, and I get a ticket, get to the job site, and the guys are like, hey, look what I got, you know, and, and they're like, oh. And one guy says this, be careful, because they come in threes. I'm like, I'm like I rebuke that in Jesus' name. I don't receive that. The next week, same thing, same road, same cup of coffee, you know, doing it the, the same, same thing. the same police officer? Yes. Oh! Bam! Get nailed at the same place. Same speed. Pulls me over. Oh, you didn't learn, did you? You know. So, go to the job. Hey, look what I got this morning. And, uh, and so, the one guy, I told you they come in threes. You better be careful. And so just like, psh, whatever, you're an idiot. The week after that, <laughs> same, same, everything, bam. Got my third ticket. And Sternley's just like, I am tired of burning our money on you going too fast. Slow it down. And uh, so I did. And uh, I don't think you've had a ticket since then. You know, I don't think I, I have. I don't think you have. But, but here's the, there's a couple things right there. Are you going to them? I'll let no, you go to them. No, yeah, it's your turn. It's, <laughs> when we talk about floodwaters rising, there's a couple things in that story is, number one, words were spoken, and instead of renewing your mind to not speeding, you just flippantly, you know, you know sometimes you can use Christianese words but unless you have already dealt with it in, in your heart and made a change, you can say, I rebuke that flippantly. Are you hearing me? Because I've seen Christians do it. They flippantly go, oh, I rebuke that. Well, you could rebuke it all you want, but your behavior didn't change. So you can read the word as much as you want, but that doesn't mean your thinking is going to change. You have to actually act on the word. So even though the word went out from your wife, please do not speed. We can't afford this. Until you act on the word, you're just going to find yourself in that same circle. Thank God, after the third one, you finally decided to change. Yes, I have changed. A little bit, a little bit. Good. Okay, the next one that came was the winds blew. The winds blew. So we got rains. It rains. It floods. floods. Now we got winds. Now we got wind. Wind. Uh, we felt a lot of wind where, where we were this week. And, um, you know, sometimes in life, the, the wind is, is pretty strong. And I'm talking about things that happen in life. Um, actually, we're really thankful this week because we were traveling down the road. Um, and didn't realize that the mechanic that had just done our brakes didn't um, tighten the lug nuts on one wheel. And, um, yes, we had a trailer behind us. And we're on a two-lane highway, and all of a sudden the trailer and the truck are weaving all over. Thank God there wasn't a car coming at us. And I looked in the passengers, and I could see the wheel just, brrr, and I'm like, we have a problem. And we pulled, thank God we were able to pull over. And uh, my husband knew, I have a feeling those lug nuts weren't tightened. 
Sure enough, he pops the cap off the wheel and seven of the eight lug nuts were disintegrated. They, had just, they just fell. We were hanging on by one lug nut. <laughs> Make the sure wind felt pretty strong. Make sure your lug nuts are tight. So sometimes life has, has some storms, some wind storms. We're out on the side of this highway for a couple of hours trying to get tow trucks, and, and I'll spare you the details, but keeping our joy in the midst of that in my mind when some of the things the dispatcher was telling us were just craziness. Have you ever been in those situations where they're telling you stuff and you're like, that doesn't even make sense, ma'am. You know, and you're just dealing with all of this craziness. And uh, you're, uh, we were in a, in a life storm. We're like, we have to be moved. We can't just sit here all night. You have to do something. And we, thankfully, God provided in a couple hours, we were out of our situation. But storms happen. You know, wind happens. Oh, oh I'm so surprised some of you men didn't go to something there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll think of it later. Wind happens. Okay. <clears throat> then, <laughs> then it says it beat on the house. You ever been in life where you feel like everything's going, going the wrong way and I feel like the house is being beat upon? My house is just getting trashed and thrashed. Those are, that's a big storm. You know, it's in our Christian life we go through go through things, and and uh, you know our little thing was, you know, a couple hours wasn't that big of a deal. We survived easy, but some things that you go through in life aren't easy, and they don't last a couple hours. And you feel the wind, and uh, you know you feel the rain, you feel the torrents, and it's in those moments that are literally a make it or break it moment in your faith. Is it worth serving God if this is, where are you, God, in this moment? I need you more now than I've ever needed you. And I'm not only dealing with the rain heavy and the winds and the floods, but now my house is being threatened. I don't think this thing's going to survive. And, you know, sometimes your heart can be hurt so bad you feel like, I don't think I can deal with one more thing. God, Has anybody ever said where that? are you? Okay, a few honest people in here, in the crowd. If you're watching online, yeah, you, you got to be honest with yourself. And this is Jesus. He's wrapping up, you know, chapter 5, 6, and 7 of his Sermon on the Mount. And this is his conclusion to everything he said in the couple chapters ahead of that, and, he, and he's basically saying, life's going to be this way, and you're going to go through some tests, and things are going to get rough, and then they're going to get rougher, and then when you think you can't handle any more, more is going to be added on to already the problem. How many know it just, it can be too much, but he's, he's, he's saying, what are you going to do where have you built your life? Because if your life's not built on my teachings, you're not going to survive. You know, I looked up that uh, phrase, beat upon the house, and it said that it meant blow after blow. So what you were saying about, you know, we've heard the saying, and many of us have probably out of frustration said, I can't handle one more thing. But what it's meaning is, you can handle blow after blow. And here's, here's the deal is how did, how did the house pass the test of these, of these four things that came across it? <laughs> Solid foundation. And how did we know that they'd pass the test? It was still standing. I have a question for you. Some of you in here have feel, felt like you're taking blow after blow. My question is, are you still standing? You know, I don't know. I'm just feeling led. Some of you know what I'm talking about. You didn't lose your faith, but you went through hell. Mm -hmm. 
and you're standing Believing. in faith. You believe through the process. Yep. Yep. And it was like, what is happening? Could you just stand? I bet we just applaud one another. Okay, you can be seated. You know what it means to keep your mind, and that can be a challenge. And sometimes your mind is, is going reeling, you know, God, I need you. And it's, it's like, this is like, I need you yesterday. Where are you? But he, he says, you're going to make it. You're going to make it. And I don't know why we have to go through tests in life and, and difficult seasons and things. But it, it, well, there's a big theological explanation to all that. And at the end, it makes us better, kinder, gentler people. But, if, but it is a choice because it can make us bitter and angry and a mean person if we're not built on the solid rock. And these tests do come in life, and if you've been through one, you'll probably go through another. <laughs> and so, um, well, that isn't speaking faith, Pastor. I, you know, I thought we were people of victory. We are. We are. We are victorious because we go through, we don't stay, and we come out on the other side. I mean, the amount of people that stood, you've lived this passage of Scripture in your life, and you may not have broke it down this way, but you're, you're identifying with it. Oh, yeah. yeah, but I stayed in faith. You know, we love Hebrews chapter 11 because it talks about the people who won victory after victory. They stayed in faith. Abraham, he believed God when it was impossible and had, had Isaac and Sarah and, and David and, you know, killed Goliath and, and all these great victories. But there's a phrase where it comes at the end of the chapter. And I had a hard time with it. It says, these people all stayed in faith in their mind, is really what it's talking about, even when they got their bodies cut into and their heads severed. And I'm just reading this. I'm like, I like the other victory part of this thing. Why is this even in the Scriptures? Because it doesn't seem to matter. I mean, these guys won their dead back to life and believed God and you know, victory after victory. And this guy, he was victorious and his body was cut in half. And I, and I struggled with that for the longest time. I'm like, what it is is they never wavered even at the point of death. They died in faith. They didn't give up. You, you can do whatever you want to this body, but I'm not quitting on God, is really what they were doing. And I was like, oof. Faith is all about in your thought life. You know, I don't know if anybody's ever made that connection, but faith, you got you to choose to stay in faith in your mind and in your thought life. Uh, you know, as I was studying, I, I believe there's, three areas, the most common areas where we trip up in our thought life during the storms. So when the storms come, when the wind comes, when the rain comes, the floods come, blow after blow comes, there are three areas in your mind that trip you up the most, and it is worry, fear, doubt, and unbelief. I'll say it again. Worry, fear, doubt, and unbelief. Those are the three most common areas you're going to struggle with in your brain when storms come. And I want, I got a lot of scripture here. Can you handle it? So we're going to Romans chapter 15, verse 13. Romans 15, 13. I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy. Everybody say joy. joy. And peace because you trust in him. Okay, now I'm going to Isaiah. I'm going to start quoting a lot of scripture here. Isaiah 55, verse 12. Isaiah 55, 12 says, For you shall go out with joy and be led out with peace. 
Colossians. We're going to Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. Unless you're a speedster, you may not keep up with me. Colossians 3, 15. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which you also were called in one body, and be thankful. thankful. So in, in those things that are the three main things that we deal with in our brain, the worry, the, the doubt and unbelief, and the fear, there are components that I believe the Scripture gives us the remedy. I mean, it's one thing to deal with the worry and the fear and the doubt and the unbelief, but it's another thing to go, God has even given you how to, how to deal with it. He's told us how. He, I just read it. And there's two main components, and it's joy and it's thankfulness, which in turn, you're practicing peace. Joy and thankfulness. Is that a choice in your brain? It absolutely is. There are times when you don't feel so joyful when the storm. I didn't feel like being joyful in the car when we're stuck along a very busy highway with one lug nut on a tire. But we actually did choose joy. And it, we knew it was a choice. I mean, we talked about it. We're not in this series without you. Okay? We're in the middle of this series, too. It's very fresh on our minds. I just read a whole book this week on it. And we're in the midst of it, too. And when the storms come, I got a, we got a choice in our brain. And then just we were so thankful. We were so thankful. I mean, if the tire had popped off, it was not going to be a pretty picture. Not a pretty picture. We'd just come over some passes and freeways with semis. We were thankful. Thankful. Do, do, you, do you stop to think about how thankful you can be in the midst of a storm? And then the joy level just starts to, to bubble up out of you. Like, I can have joy in the midst of this. You might have to dig. What can I be joyful for right now? But start digging. What can you be thankful and joyful about? And sometimes you gotta, you got to think. And you know what happens when you start thinking about thankfulness? You just start not thinking about what you're irritated about. When you start thinking, and you know what we all should do? We should all create your own little journal of every time God did good things in your life. And you need that because when those moments when everything's going crazy in your life, rain, flood, wind, are we going to make it? Then you go, that's when you go back and go, well, God was faithful there. God got us through that. God did this. We, we praised him when we didn't think it was going to happen. And we came out and on and on and on and on. It's like, okay, we're going to get through the, the rain the flood, and the wind, and we're going to stand. Right. God was faithful there. He's not going to, he didn't bring us this far to just ditch us. He's going to get us through this. And, you know, one of the things, it's interesting that scripture, uh, where you mentioned blow after blow, believe it or not, the word devil, when you study in the Greek, one of the definitions of the devil is blow after blow after blow. Diablos is the Greek word for that. Diablos means to blow. And the, the word picture is like somebody throwing a rock at a wall. Like a, you know, just throwing a rock. You may not break through the wall, the first throw, the second throw, the third throw. But how many know after about 12 rocks being thrown, stuff starts and you keep, it'll blow literally a hole right through the wall. And that's a description of your and my enemy. He's not just going to send one thought and go, okay, we're good. He's going to keep throwing thoughts. And that's why this renewing our mind is critical. It is so critical because this is where uh, if we can get our minds fixed on God's thoughts and stayed on God's thoughts, we're going to win over Diablos. 
You know, and here's another thing. Some of you, somebody mentioned rashes or in during praise thing. Here's the deal, and I've dealt with this. One of the things in divine healing is the enemy gives you an illness, a seasonal illness. And it's not just one season that comes around. And, you know, if you watch television, Diablos is in the television. Because every season, the pharmaceutical companies are telling you, you need their product. Do you deal with runny nose and itchy eyes? And you may not be that moment, but the ne- one of these days you're going to have a runny nose and itchy eyes, and your faith is going to get connected to that. Oh, yeah, that's me. And if you buy that product, it'll just magically go away. No. You know, and it's, do you suffer from this or suffer from that? Are, are you 50 years old? <laughs> do you have gastrinol? You know, do you have those embarrassing moments? Do you, is it hard for you to get away from the toilet? Do you need to put a toilet in your car? You know, and you, you live life long enough, one of those symptoms is going to show up, you know. And, and here's Diablos, he's throwing those, and he's wanting faith in not only the medicine or the whatever, but he wants you to put faith in that you identify with that, and that's you. That's me. I suffer. I'm that victim. It's all subtle. It just comes. And watch. One out of four commercials is telling you you're ill or you're going to be ill. Did you know one in ten Americans? <laughs> it's just like, that's Diablos subtly throwing a rock, trying to get your mind off by his stripes, I am healed. And get your thoughts on, I do need that med. You know what? I'm just, I'm just going to meddle here just a minute. Because I hate the devil. And I hate what he does to you and me. And at some point, your mind's got to say, enough is enough. And I'm not going to take it anymore. This is greater than what I'm dealing with. I'm all about doctors and medicine. Don't give me, if you need medicine, get the medicine. Be healthy. Be strong. Get, we don't want your gas blowing up in here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But at some point, you've got to realize, and after we went through COVID, we ought to know a few things. Because uh, the Bible talks about the works of the flesh are drunkenness and orgies and blah, blah, blah. And then it says one thing, witchcraft is a work of the flesh. But when you study what witchcraft is, it's called the Greek word pharmakia. Sounds a lot like pharmacy, pharmaceutical. Money. So the enemy wants you to be a victim of blow after blow. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of seasonal stuff. I'm tired of, I just get over it, and then it comes back. I just get healed of it, and then it comes back. I just get a little victory of it, and then I'm back in the same thing. I just get a walk away from that. I'm, I'm doing good for a while, and then boom, I'm back in it. Mentally, you got to go, enough's enough, and I'm going to get the victory, and I'm not going to allow this to continue the rest of my life. This has to stop with this generation and not be passed to the next generation. And you got to go to work. You got to go to work. You got to wash. You got to keep washing. You got to keep memorizing. You got to find the word that the promise you can stand on and believe it with all of your heart that you're convinced God is greater, His word is stronger than Diablos. 
and you will walk in victory. You will be a part of the parade of triumph. You will start diffusing the fragrance of God everywhere you go. Why don't you stand on that? I want to read a scripture. You can put it up there. We're going to Deuteronomy. You mentioned earlier that a lot of passages in scripture have an if word. And there's promises and there's blessings if you do these things. And in Deuteronomy 28, verse 47, it says, Because you did not serve the Lord your God with joy and gladness of heart for the abundance of everything. Therefore, you shall serve your enemies. In your thought life, you have a choice whether you're going to choose joy and gladness. You have a choice whether you're going to go to thankfulness for everything, the abundance of what God has truly blessed you with. You can either go to thankfulness or you can go to the wrong thinking. It is your choice, but you will bear the fruit of your choice. Why don't you close your eyes? Father, we just thank you that you've given us a victory through Christ. You are victory. You are the champion. You win every battle. Father, we need to team up with you. We need to get your words in our minds. We need to get your promises. We need to start acting out what we, is in the word and believe it talk it up. May it be a part of our own DNA that the fruit of the Word produces results. If you're here today or watching online, man, God doesn't want you to be plagued. Doesn't want your mind reeling, struggling constantly. I want you to be built on a solid rock. And being built on a solid rock means receiving Jesus Christ. Lord, come into me. Be a part of me. Renew me. Make me born again. Cleanse me from my past where I've missed it. Clothe me in your robes of righteousness. Put a ring of sonship and royalty on my finger. Put shoes on my feet that I can walk this walk in confidence. That's what God wants to do. We're going to count to three. And on three, if you're in this place or watching online, raise your hand. Just, I need Jesus. I need to get over some stuff. I need to get through this stuff. I need the confidence of God. And on three, Pastor Sean's going to lead us in a prayer. And that's the beginning of our mind connecting with God's spirit first. And then our mind starts to follow as we pursue him more and more. One, today's the day to do this. Absolutely the day. Maybe you're lost. Maybe not right with God get right today. It's easy. He's more than willing. He's, in fact, he's already forgiven you. You just got to join up with his forgiveness. Two, don't tug yourself out of it. And three, raise your hand in this place. Yes. One's already been up. Yep. Thank yep. Come Jesus. on. Right Thank on. You, Victory is happening Thank in this place. Devil you, is being defeated. This is the beginning of Diablos going back down under your feet where he belongs. Amen. Amen. Woo. Church, would you pray this prayer with every individual and those watching online today is your day too and this prayer is not just a salvation prayer this prayer is for those who go i need help in my thought life so heavenly father heavenly father i thank you i thank you for the blood of jesus for the blood of jesus that forgives me that forgives me where i have fallen short where i have fallen short of your best of your best in my thought life in my thought life i ask today i ask today that you would be that you would be not only savior my only savior but lord of my life but lord of my life completely in charge completely in charge i give it all to you give it all to and you and i thank you and i thank I you i choose i choose joy joy i choose I I choose thankfulness. Thankfulness. I choose. I choose to walk. To walk in the fruit of the spirit. In the fruit of the spirit. Through my thought life. Through my thought life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Oh man, that is amazing. And one of my favorite verses tells you what to think, how to think. I call it the Bill and Ted verse. 
uh, Philippians 4, 8, it says, And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. So if you don't know what to think, what to replace those thoughts with, there's your list. And there's another verse that reminds me in Matthew 12. It says, when an evil spirit leaves a person, it goes into the desert seeking rest but finding none. Then it says, I will return to the person I come from. So it returns and finds its former home empty, swept, and in order. Then the spirit finds seven other spirits more evil than itself, and they all enter the person and live there. So that person is worse off than before. That's like your thoughts. You get rid of your thought. You either, I rebuke that thought, and it doesn't go anywhere, or you dig in deep and you go, I rebuke that thought and it leaves. But you're not filling your mind with the thoughts that are pure and lovely and that are excellent. So then that thought and seven others come back worse. Depression, anxiety. When you just got rid of something that was minuscule. Just a little seed of a thought. So do the work. But then get in the Word, and it's so good. Get in the Word and think on the things that God has for you. So important. So this week, whenever a thought comes, kick it to the curb with extreme prejudice. But don't just stop there. Fill your mind with what God says about you, with the thoughts that God says to think on. So... Thank you, Lord, for everything that you're doing in our lives. Thank you that you give us the power to rebuke Diablos, that he has no power in our lives, in our thought lives, in our minds. They are pure and clean with you, Lord. And thank you that when we clean the house and that we fill it with you, that those evil spirits have nowhere to reside in our minds. Thank you, Lord, for this week that it is most excellent. Thank you. In your precious, matchless, wonderful name. In the name of Jesus. Amen.